let's take a look. We have two spheres A and B. Uh, they're made of pure zinc and they are at rest 0.1 meters apart on a wooden table. Sphere A is negatively charged and is free to move on the table, while sphere B is uncharged and fixed to the table, as shown in the diagram below. Okay, let's hear the stories. High intensity ultraviolet light of frequency 2.8 times 10 to the power 16 hertz is now shown on to sphere B. The work function of zinc is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Okay, let's carry on. 10.1.1 define the term work function of a metal. That is the minimum amount of energy required by a certain metal for electrons to be ejected or to be emitted from its metal surface, from its surface, okay? Right, that is work function. 10.1.2, uh, explain using a suitable calculation while the ultraviolet light shown on sphere B will eject electrons from its surface. So we are given the work function, right? And the frequency that is shown. There's two ways you can explain using a usable, using a suitable calculation why the ultraviolet light is suitable, okay? Yeah, there's two ways you can do that. You can convert the work function to the threshold frequency, and then you can compare threshold frequency with the frequency that is shown. The other way of doing it, you can use this frequency that is shown to find the energy that will be incident on the metal, on the metal surface and compare the energy to the work function. One between the two ways. So our work function is equals to 6.63 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Let me calculate the energy of the frequency that is being shown on the metal. Okay. I'm choosing to take that route. You can take the other route, which will conclude in the same fashion. So if I take this route, I'm going to have Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. Planck's constant 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Multiply by the frequency that is shown. Uh, what is the frequency that is shown? 2.8 times 10 to the 16 hertz. So let me put that in my calculator, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied by 2.8 times 10 to the power 16. This is 1.86 times 10 to the minus 17 joules. Okay, clearly it is easy to see that 1.86 times 10 to the minus 17 joules is greater than 6.63 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, okay? Minus 17 is greater than minus 19. We know that for sure, okay? So the energy of the light that is being shown on the metal is greater than the threshold frequency. So obviously electrons are gonna be emitted. They're gonna be ejected from the metal surface. So this is one way you can show that uh, indeed, the electrons are going to be emitted, okay? 10.1.2. Let's take a look at 10.1.3. The interesting question, okay? It was the first time I'm coming ac across a question like this. It's really interesting, right? But it's not difficult. I don't know why the uh, mark allocation is six marks. It's not difficult at all, but it is interesting, okay? So spheres, sphere A carries a charge of minus 5.4 times 10 to the minus 6 columns and requires a minimum force of 0 0.027 neutrons to move from rest. So we have the force, okay? The force is equals to 0 0.027 newtons. The charge on A, the charge on A, is 5.4 times 10 to the minus 6. I'm forgetting about the sign. I'm just focusing on the magnitude, okay? Uh, the question is saying, let's calculate the minimum number of photons of ultraviolet light that must strike sphere B, which will cause sphere A to move from its rest position. 
Okay, we have to go back to the basics. You need to understand that one photon can emit only one electron. Okay, so if we calculate the number of electrons that are being emitted on the sphere, then we can use that to calculate the number of photons. Basically, the number of electrons is equal to the number of photons. So we are actually supposed to just find the number of electrons. The number of electrons will be the number of photons. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we will use F is equal to K Q1 Q2 divided by R squared. Okay, we have the electrostatic force. We have two charges that are um, attracting each other or repelling. I don't know in which direction they are moving. Okay, if electrons have been uh, emitted from the sphere, then it will become positively charged. Okay, so they are attracting each other with a force of 0 0.027 newtons. I have Q1 or QA, which is 5.4 times 10 to the minus 6. I can go ahead and find Q2 because K is a constant and I have R. After finding Q2, then I'm going to calculate the number of electrons on Q2. Okay, let me go ahead and do that. The electrostatic force, 0 0.027. K, 9 times 10 to the 9. Q1, 5.4 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by Q2. Everything divided by R squared. So R squared will be 0 0.1 squared. If we cross multiply, we're going to get so 0 0.027 multiplied by 0 0.1 squared. I'm getting 2.7 times 10 to the minus 4. Being equals to 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 5.4 times 10 to the minus 6. I'm getting 4.8 6 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by Q2. So it's obvious what I need to do. I need to divide both sides by the coefficient of this is to the power 4 and not to the power minus 4. This is to the power 4. So let me just go ahead and change that. So we have to the power 4. Okay. So now I just need to divide both sides by 4.86 times 10 to the power 4. So what is 2.7 times 10 to the power minus 4 divided by 4.86 times 10 to the power 4? Okay, I'm getting Q2 is equals to 5.5556 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So now I have the charge of Q2. I can go ahead and calculate the number of electrons that were emitted, okay? Of which the number of electrons that are emitted will give me the number of photons. So the number of electrons is equal to the charge divided by the charge of an electron. So we're going to have 5.5556 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 1.6, okay? 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That is the charge of an electron. Okay, so let me put this in my calculator. Divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, I'm getting 3.4723. Okay, two decimal places because this is my final answer. 3.47 times 10 to the power 10 electrons which is the number of photons, okay? So I think you would also need to conclude that the number of photons is equal to the number of electrons, which is 3.4723 times 10 to the power 10.